Welcome to Purpose 360. I'm Carol Cohn. And I'm Chris Noble. And we're on a journey to explore the brightest and most innovative minds and initiatives in social purpose. Today, companies and brands must stand for something meaningful. They have to have a social purpose and bring that purpose forward to their employees, their customers, and their community. Each episode, we're talking to leaders at Fortune 100 companies, global brands, social enterprise startups, NGOs, and everything in between. We'll be taking a deep dive to learn how they are integrating purpose into their organizations. To benefit both business and society for enduring impact. Join us. Welcome to Purpose 360. I'm Carol Cohn, and today we have a wonderful guest um, with us, uh, Reba Dominski, and she is the Chief Responsibility Officer from U.S. Bank. So welcome, Reba. Thank you so much, Carol. It's an honor to be here. I met Reba through CECP, which is Chief Executives for Corporate Purpose. It's a 20-year-old organization, and I was very fortunate to have her on a panel um, earlier this year. And we got to chatting, and, and I asked her if she'd be on the show, and she said, absolutely. The first thing I learned about her is that she said, don't call me Reba, like Reba McIntyre, because that's ruined the pronunciation of my name. So I have always remembered that. So um, again, Reba, welcome. We always like to start our podcast by the numbers. So let's take a look. U.S. Bank dates back to 1863 when the first National Bank of Cincinnati opened its doors. Then, over the next century, as regional banks proliferated, there was a consolidation. After a series of mergers at the turn of the 21st century, U.S. Bank took on its new name and established their headquarters in Minnesota. Today, they are the fifth largest bank in the United States, with 74,000 employees and $482 billion in assets as of June 30th, 2019. They donated over 57 million in one year to NGOs. They also loaned 4.1 billion to help invest and revitalize communities. And we're going to get um, into great depth in their community investment later in the show. And then here's my favorite number. Their employees volunteer 550 hours per day to the community. So on an annual basis, that adds up to a lot of time and impact. So let's get started. Ray, but tell us a bit about your background and how it brought you to your current role. And of course, you and I met at your previous role at Target. That's right. I've known Carol a long time. Um, so I'll share a little bit about my background. I was raised by a single mother in Detroit, uh, born in India, raised in Detroit. And my mother raised my sister and I with two core values. One was the importance of education, education as a pathway out of poverty, a pathway into opportunity. The other was uh, the importance of service. And every morning, eating my Cheerios, I would stare at a quote that hung on the wall. And the quote was by Rabindranath Tagore. And it went like this. I slept and dreamt that life was joy. I awoke and found that life was service. I acted and behold, service was joy. And I believe that quote has truly shaped my life. So after I graduated from the University of Michigan, with a degree in English. I worked in retail for the May Company and then at Target, which is where we met Carol. I was at Target for over 20 years. I worked in a variety of businesses at Target. I was a business analyst, a buyer, a senior buyer. I worked in the stores and product design and development and sourcing. 
But while at Target, I made a decision to follow my mother's legacy and decided I wanted to move into nonprofit. And when I told my boss at the time, she suggested that I explore corporate social responsibility. And how I describe CSR to people, and you know this well, Carol, is it's this beautiful Venn diagram behind bus- between business and social impact. So on one side, you've got the P&L, you have strategy, you have developing people, you have corporate structure. On the other side, I'm so drawn to service and I'm drawn to social impact. And I get to live in the juicy center of that Venn diagram. So when I was at Target, I was on the corporate social responsibility team for about six years. I had the honor and the privilege of leading Target's billion dollar commitment to education. And then I came to U.S. Bank about four years ago because the leadership at the bank was building U.S. Bank's purpose and core values. And they asked me to be a part of that and to think about how our giving and service could meaningfully connect to our purpose at U.S. Bank. And how wonderful that your background, you have a business background, you have hands on into the business, into merchandising, which made you, when you went to the not-for-profit side, you had a different sort of view than someone that just comes up through the not-for-profit field. That's exactly right. And I think in the work that I'm leading now, and I know we'll talk more about this, understanding the business can make you a very relevant leader in corporate social responsibility because it's more than just philanthropy. It's about integrating the business to maximize your impact. And and that's what struck me when we had our conversation at CCP, that you seamlessly flowed between the business, the brand, the community, the investments. And that's the power of purpose today and especially social purpose. So I know you've given us a glimpse into what your purpose is, but perhaps you could say it again uh, for our listeners. What is your purpose? personal purpose? Well, I do have a personal purpose. I was in a development program uh, while at Target, and we were actually asked to craft our purpose statement, our Ah. personal purpose statement. So I have it. It's hanging on the wall of my office. And it hasn't changed for several years. So my personal purpose is to give more than I take and make the world better through actions big and small. And I have to tell you, Probably the most important words in that statement are actions big and small because there are little things that I try to do every day, the way that I impact the people that I work with, the way that I spend time with my family and the people I care about um, that, that I think can have an impact and make the world better, especially when it comes to raising those kids and putting good human beings in the planet. Um, but a lot of things I get to do at work, you know, when you look at $57 million to nonprofits uh, just last year that U.S. Bank gave away, when you look at, you know, over 200,000 volunteer hours or that 550 a day that you mentioned, there's a lot of big impact I get to have as well. So to give more than I take and make the world better through actions big and small. And um, and, and I don't know if your children look at that when they're eating their Cheerios. <laughs> they do eat their Cheerios. Shout out to General Mills. <laughs> there you go. And, and another great Minnesota company. That's right. Okay. So um, I know that U.S. Bank is in the business of economic, community, and workforce development. Um, can you expand on what that means to you and how it guides business decisions? Yeah, so it was it was interesting when I came over from Target, uh, you know, moving from retail into financial services. What surprised me the most about being a U.S. banker is how social impact is really woven into the job of being a banker. So I get people all the time who are interested in joining my team. And what I tell them is, sure, you can come work on my team. But if you are a banker, you are in the business of economic community and workforce development. So if you look at our corporate social responsibility annual report, and I encourage all of your listeners to do that, it's at usbank.com slash community. Um, you'll see some of those numbers that you shared, shared earlier, Carol. Uh, we made $2 billion last year in small business loans that not only made a lot of dreams come true, but those are small businesses that will fuel local economies. We made $88 million in American Dream Loans, which will put a lot of people into their first homes. And we know that nothing creates community like neighborhoods that are filled with people who care about each other. 
as you mentioned, our U.S. Bank volunteers volunteered over 570 hours every day to improve the lives of real people in the communities that we serve. So I walk around saying this all the time. Bankers are in the business of making communities stronger. And the role that I get to play in that and the way that I get to guide their decisions is that our corporate social responsibility strategy at U.S. Bank helps guide the banker's business decisions. So I'm blessed to be in a role where I get to help 74,000 people every day make decisions that are good for business, for people, and for the planet. Uh, that's wonderful. And, and, I'm, and, you know, it had to take a really special company to pull you away from Target. You know, we all love Target, not just for the products, but for their big commitment to community. So it's thrilling to hear that you have this opportunity to become a banker with a heart. So I'm, I'm thrilled about that. Yeah, well, um, you know, Target is a fantastic organization and everything I learned, I learned at Target. But it has been really fun uh, to apply a lot of those learnings here at the bank. So tell me, what are the you know, two or three key learnings that you took from Target over to banking? Well, you know, you mentioned earlier um, the power of a brand. And when I came to U.S. Bank, that's really uh, what was being created, this purpose, core values, and a brand. And the brand that was articulated to me by uh, those who were trying to convince me to come to U.S. Bank was this idea of making possible happen for people. You know, for a while, bankers used to walk around and they'd, they'd say, we're in the business of making dreams come true, but that's not exactly right. As bankers, we are servant leaders. We are here to make people's dreams come true when they are ready. So when you're ready to uh, open that college savings account for, for your daughter or your granddaughter, when you're ready to buy your first home or your retirement home, when you're ready to take that vacation that you've saved for for six months or six years, we want to make that possible happen. And so I started thinking about this idea of possibility and brand. And what does that look like in a community, uh, in these diverse communities that we live in that have so many varied needs? And so that commitment to brand is really what I brought with me uh, from Target to U.S. Bank. And it was perfect timing as U.S. Bank was really thinking about our brand. And and that's really powerful, um, considering that there's just so many financial services institutions. And I know that, you know, most of them have a heart and they make profits, too, and they want to differentiate themselves. And so um, the folks at U.S. Bank Corp got a really, really solid professional. So let's dive into Community Possible further. I'd love to read from your uh, website uh, the following paragraph about community possible and that it's broken into the three categories, work, home, and play. We believe all people deserve the opportunity to dream, believe, and achieve. The building blocks that make our country great, a stable job, a home to call your own, and a community connected through culture, recreation, and play continue to be at the heart of possibility for all of us. Through U.S. Bank Community Possible, we invest our time, resources, and passion in economic development by supporting efforts to create stable jobs, better homes, and vibrant communities. Now, that's a wonderful, wonderful statement. And I bet that you had a role in creating that. <laughs> I did. And let me tell you how gratifying it is to hear you saying that out loud, because we spent so much time <laughs> on getting right. that statement right. So, so here's what happened. When I started at U.S. Bank, I was so amazed at all of the good that the bank was doing in communities. But what data showed, and I always start with kind of data and insights to guide my work, is that none of our key stakeholders knew about it. Most of them would say things like, oh yeah, we think US Bank is a great company. They do some good, but no stakeholder could remember a specific program uh, that US Bank was running. So we took some key internal and external partners. We analyzed the landscape. And again, we used data and insights and a lot of heart to develop this giving and engagement platform that we call Community Possible. And we launched it in 2016. Now at the heart of Community Possible is this concept of economic development, which just makes sense for mm. a bank. I often say sure. if we were bankers and we said we were going to save the whales, people would probably say, what do whales have to do with banking? But when right. you say we are focused on economic development, it just makes sense. We have these three pillars that hold the platform up. 
work, home, and play, because we do believe that the building blocks of all communities where all things are possible are really about stable jobs, a home to call your own, and communities that are connected through the arts, through recreation and play. Now, I do want to share that um, work and home are pretty expected. You would expect a financial services company to work, to, to focus on work and home. Play is a bit more unexpected. But when you think about, Carol, the innovation and creativity needed to stay relevant, in this industry, or I think in any industry, play really matters. So we are having so much fun with play. Uh, we've expanded it from a focus on the arts, culture, and play spaces in low to moderate income communities to really thinking about how play builds character, how play builds problem solving skills, and how it can unite diverse communities. So that's a little bit about the Community Possible platform. Again, this very intentional connection to our brand and the concept of possibility, focus on economic development, work home play. And what I'm the most proud of is in addition to the 57 million plus in grants and corporate contributions that we gave last year and those 550 hours of volunteerism per day is that the majority of our employees understand community possible. They live community possible. They make mm. community possible in their own communities. And, you know, you sounded so beautiful when you, you said all of the kind of key messages about our platform. <laughs> right. I go to a lot of events where I hear bankers and leaders in the sort organization talking about community possible in a way that it's relevant to them because most of us mm. can connect to this idea of having a stable job, having a home to call your own and wanting to play every once in a while to release some of the stress that we build up and to really think about how can you be creative and how can you be innovative. So it's been really fun to watch community possible grow over the years. So can you recall a story where one of your key senior bankers was engaged in play per se, and and it's a bridge from the bank to the community? Yeah, I can actually. Last year, we took our CEO, Andy Ciceri, and our entire managing committee to uh, a local boys and girls club. And we actually um, engaged the kids at that organization for about an hour and a half in play. Uh, we divided into different activities. There was a small group that went into a recording studio. <laughs> okay. and they actually recorded a rap about um, money. It was called My Piggy <laughs> Bank. And I wish I could huh? remember some of the lines, but hearing our vice chair of consumer banking, Tim Welsh, rapping about his piggy bank was the highlight of my career. <laughs> Never <laughs> forget. We, we, need, our, we need that. So you have that sound. We'll put know, it in the show notes. No, let us see if we can find it. Although <laughs> okay, we might be need funny. To, to get some sign off on that. Our CEO uh, played a game um, with a bunch of kids um, that was a, a ball and a number of squares. And it was just super fun to watch him engage with these kids. Um, we came together at the beginning of the event, at the end of the event, and we talked about why play really matters. Um, and so, you know, that's just one example of uh, the way that we've made play uh, possible and we've made it come to life with our most senior executives. We also last year went to Special Olympics Minnesota with our managing committee and we played with children uh, that have different needs um, and different abilities. And that was an incredibly rewarding experience as well. So we've had a lot of fun with play. It's memorable um, considering the industry that you're in. And was it difficult in the beginning when you were developing the pillars to sell in the idea of play? You know, it actually wasn't as hard as you might think. Um, so the way that we sold play to the bankers was really by connecting it to the creativity and innovation that we need in leadership at the bank. If you think about financial services and you think about uh, the disruption in our industry, and in fact, in most industries, uh, we really need leaders who are creative. We need innovators. We need people who think differently. And we know that play builds that skill set. We also were able to put together some data around the need for more play spaces in low-income communities, the need for more arts and culture in low to moderate income communities. So the combination of data and connecting play to the talent that we need at the bank was a pretty easy sell. And we're a playful, we're a playful group of bankers. Believe it or not, bankers do know how to play. <laughs> no, that's great. Hey, hey, as, as an aside, um, I know that when we create initiatives, there's always three pillars. 
And you created three pillars. Um, and now my understanding is that comes from um, some research that says the mind can can really identify and remember things in threes. I'm curious if you know um, the derivation of the three pillars. You know, it was actually connected to that exact insight that you just mentioned, Carol. We wanted to make sure that we had a platform that was memorable and that stood out from the crowd. And we knew that if we were able to communicate it in threes, it would be differentiated and our own employees, our key stakeholders would remember it. And that's exactly what's happened. We also have a CEO, Andy Ciceri, who always says, he's got three things. So whenever he presents, <laughs> it's three okay. things. And so he's read that research about what people remember. And so not only was it an opportunity for us to differentiate and keep things simple, which I think is important in this world where there's so much noise and so much clutter, but it actually matched our CEO's communication preferences. So it was just a perfect fit. So I know that in work play and um they work hard, play hard and home that you have some terrific programs. I'd love you to say, gosh, this is my favorite in each one of those areas. What I'd love to talk a little bit is a time when we combined two of our areas. So let me start with ever since we launched Community Possible, we have found a fun and exciting way to highlight the program. So if you ask me to pick my favorite, I will say that in the summer of 2016, we launched Community Possible in a really unique way. We took what we called the road trip of a lifetime, and we called it the Community Possible Relay. The idea was to spread a wave of volunteerism across the country by passing a volunteer baton from one community to the next. And the relay had this iconic symbol. It was a giant executive coach bus. We were inspired by the Oscar Mayer Wiener Mobile. And we said, what would be the Oscar Mayer Wiener Mobile for us? <laughs> <laughs> so it was wait. a giant coach bus. We called it Big Blue. We wrapped it in U.S. Bank Blue. And along the side of the bus, all of the cities that we were going to visit, we had two employees which uh, who served as our relay captains and one dedicated driver. And over 96 days, the Community Possible Relay traveled over 13,000 miles across 25 states. They engaged 153,000 volunteers, 96 nonprofit partners in both planned and random acts of service. And it was recognized as the top volunteer engagement program of 2016 by PR Daily. And every year since then, We've had these amazing activations. We've conducted a month of play where we give over $7 million in grants to nonprofits. We engage our employees in making personal and professional commitments to play harder. We have a program that we just launched last year that I'm happy to talk more about called Work Hard, Play Hard, um, focused on financial education, helping kids get more comfortable both figuring out financial education and how to work hard, but also remembering to play so it all started with the Community Possible Relay. And then every year we have so much fun trying to figure out what's our initiative going to be that's going to really engage our employees, our customers, and our communities in the Community Possible platform. Well, that's brilliant. And that, that just sounds like it's so much fun. That's right. That's right. And I have a, a, a woman that I really admire in design. Uh, I won't say her name, but she's someone who is just extremely creative and has always been just someone I admire so much. And after we launched the Community Possible Relay, she called me and I said, that's the coolest, she said, that is the coolest thing a bank has ever done. And I was so <laughs> proud. <laughs> That's great. You should put that up on your wall. I should. Um, as, as a mantra. Um, I'd love to just turn a little bit now to Pullman because you have done so much in one community. And I know it was a learning opportunity for you. And can you tell, um, you know, share with our listeners the various elements and some of the key learnings? Yeah, you know, um, Pullman, which is a community on the south side of Chicago, has been just a wonderful example of how the entire bank has come together to transform a neighborhood and community. It's a classic example of what we call place-based investment. So in Pullman, we've combined our philanthropic investments with numerous business investments, including our subsidiary, the U.S. Bank Corps Community Development Corporation, who we call the CDC, who provided a lot of dollars for community development loans and tax credit investments. Um, last year, we celebrated the grand opening of the U.S. Bank 
Pullman Community Center. It'll serve 50,000 community members. So kind of an homage to play. I mean, if I think about it across the Community Possible platform, we have made investments in jobs, we've made investments in homes, and now we've made a significant investment in play. So in total over the last decade, we've invested $113 million in Pullman. And what I'm the most excited about is over the last 10 years, that same time frame, the Pullman community has seen a 10% increase in college graduation rates and a 52% decrease in crime rates. So for me, Pullman is really about the difference we can make when the whole bank, not just philanthropy, but also our business, invests in a community. And if you're interested in learning more about Pullman, and there is so much more, in our annual report, we created a video that talks more about our investment in Pullman. So if you go to usbank.com and click on About Us, Our Stories, and click the Community Story, there's a two or three minute video that really talks about our investment in the Pullman community in Chicago. No, that's not the one with you in, in the uh, pom-pom yes, hat, Yes, it, it is. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> you should tell that story about when your colleague asked you to do it in a pom-pom and you were a total disbeliever. Well, you know, we, we are so, um, we, we believe so strongly in what we've done in Pullman and want to replicate that in other communities that when we were talking about our annual report, the idea came up with one of my uh, colleagues in communication to feature Pullman. And she said, I'm so excited, Reba. I just picture you in a white pom-pom hat in the freezing cold Chicago winter talking about our investments in Pullman. And I went, wait, I have to wear a pom-pom hat? And indeed, she made me wear a U.S. Bank branded pom-pom hat. And you can uh, take a look at that and, and you can tell me what you think. I know you happen to like it, Carol. <laughs> no, I thought you looked great. I thought, I mean, it's memorable. That's for sure. I, I, there are some other things about, about Pullman, though, that really struck me, which was, I think you said you developed some factories that also provided jobs. We did. Yeah. What we did is we didn't actually develop the factories, but we're a bank. So we found customers to invest in Pullman with us. So customers um, like Method, the Method Soap, you may know from the shelves of Target. Uh, Method built a factory uh, that we helped fund in the Pullman community. Um, Whole Foods has made an investment in Pullman. We have a branch uh, in Pullman. And so one of the things that we do effectively as a bank is we attract business to communities that need those businesses. And that's in part what I think has led to the decrease in crime rates. There's more business, there's more people on the streets, um, and there's more jobs, more stable housing. Um, so again, a great example of how a bank can have an impact in community, not just through philanthropy, but just in investments and in bringing our customers along to also invest by our side in those communities that need us the most. And there's more possibility. That's right. Make community possible. So, so that's great. Um, not that you'll tell us where, but um, do you have any plans to take those learnings and go into another community? Well, what I can tell you is we're starting where bankers always start with data and analysis and insights. So we are partnering with our most trusted partner on the ground in Pullman, the Chicago Neighborhood Initiatives, or CNI. They have been by our side for the last decade, helping us um, make sure that we're doing the right thing in that community. So alongside CNI and the University of Chicago, we have commissioned a study to understand and what worked and what didn't work in Pullman. So before we try to replicate, we want to make sure we're being very thoughtful and analytical about what worked in that community so that we can repeat it, but we can also do it better in other communities that we serve. Oh, that's great. So let's turn to, you talk about bankers and numbers. So let's talk about the number 16. That's the, um, you give two days of paid volunteers and time off. That's pretty generous. And how did you, I, I know we're always asked uh, by companies who don't have a codified volunteerism program, how many hours are the right hours? Yeah, well, uh, for us, the number of hours is 16. And we just announced at the beginning of this year, our CEO announced that every one of our 74,000 U.S. Bank employees receives 16 hours paid time off per year to volunteer. Let's start with the fact that at US Bank, we believe that our employees are our greatest 
assets. And despite the fact that banking is becoming more and more digital, it, we know that it's our people, it's the relationships that they have with customers and communities, it's the connections that they make that really support our brand, our purpose, and really make a difference for us. So that 550 hours of volunteerism that U.S. Bank volunteers every day, we thought we need to make sure that that is something that every one of our employees can do and they get paid to do that because we want them to know all the way to the top of the house that we support our bankers engaged in um, in community. So the policy was developed in partnership with our uh, U.S. Bank CEO and our leadership team, including the executive vice president of HR. It's really important to have a strong relationship with your HR leaders to do this work right. And it was really, again, intended to show our employees that their service in communities is truly valued, it's encouraged, and it's incented. And when I think about the business benefit that we get, and you and I both know it's okay to talk about the way that you give and serve and the benefit that drives for your business because good, strong businesses lead to good, strong communities and vice versa. The business benefits are really countless. When community members and leaders see U.S. Bank volunteers serving in their communities, they understand how deeply we care. They talk to our employees. And let me tell you, our employees are our greatest brand advocates. You can talk to me all day long, Carol, and hear my story. But if I grab someone, one of our tellers, one of our branch managers, and pull them into this discussion, you would be just as inspired about their U.S. Bank story. Why? why they care so deeply about the customers and the communities that they serve. Um, I was recently having coffee with a mentee and I had one of my proudest moments at U.S. Bank. She told me that she had moved all of her banking business to U.S. Bank after hearing me and some of our other senior executives talk about the focus that we have at the bank on ethics and the work that we do in communities. So to me, there's no... No greater testament to the work than to have someone say, you know what, I want to bank with U.S. Bank because I know all of the good that you do for people in the communities that we serve. I'm very impressed with that you have created specific products for various segments of your customers. Um, can you talk about a couple of them and why they're important um, in the development process? And they do, again, come from your, your core commitment to serve communities to again, uh, you know, work hard, uh, play hard, and also support home. Yeah. So let me start with uh, the fact that it all starts for us with fair and responsible products and services. Every U.S. banker knows that every product and service we offer has to be fair and responsible. And then once we have that base covered with which is incredibly important. We encourage our employees to focus on products, services, and experiences that create economic opportunity for all. A couple of examples of products. One is our Simple Loan product, which was created in response to the data point from the Federal Reserve that shows that for 40% of Americans, they cannot afford a $400 to $500 unexpected event. Uh, expense. That that unexpected expense takes them from a level of financial stability to financial instability. And we know that there are payday lending products out there that give some relief to families when they need those emergency funds, but they come at an ex incredibly steep interest rate right, and price. And so we designed Simple Loan to be a quick, low interest rate product for emergency dollar needs. Uh, another exciting example is our Safe Debit product, which is a product that is designed to bin, bring the underbanked into the banking system. And then one of my favorites is uh, we created a loan to help employees affected by the government shutdown that was created in just two days via what we call an agile process. And it provided impacted employees by that shutdown with anywhere from $100 to $6,000 in a quick loan that was at an exceptionally low rate. What I love at US Bank is when we really think about not only how does philanthropy impact positively the people and the customers and the communities that we serve, but how can our products, how can our services, how can our experiences 
help those the most in need. So simple loans, safe debit, the government shutdown loan, those are just a couple of examples of the products and the services that we've created um, to, to help people live more stable financial lives. And I have to tell you, those are exciting, but I truly believe that the best is yet to come for U.S. Bank. And it, it sounds as you, as you tell us your story that, that philanthropy isn't even in the mix per se. It's how you engage with community that makes things possible for people to be economically viable and to be secure. And so it's wonderful to hear that you've, you know, broken down those walls very much like Target did, which is that everything is integrated and seamless and it's a holistic approach. So, so congratulations. Um, we are unfortunately drawing somewhat to a close of our show. I, I just love all your stories um, about, you know, really powerful work. So I always love to ask what two, three, four, whatever number you'd like, insights you'd like to leave with your peers. They may not be in financial services, but they certainly are on a journey to take their philanthropy and their CSR, whatever you call it, and, or, and bring it closer to the center of their business purpose, as well as really activate their social purpose. Sure. Well, let me start, Carol, by um, addressing one of your earlier comments about it's almost like philanthropy isn't part of the equation. As the president of the U.S. Bank Foundation, I'm, <laughs> I'm sorry. OK, I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> no, you're sorry. All good. No, no, no. I just want to I just want to articulate that philanthropy is part of the equation. It is not the only solution, which I know you understand. Uh, yeah, sure. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> that's funny. What I'm going to share with you, um, we've talked about the power of three, our community possible platform work home play. So I will share my top three insights for any of my peers that are on this crazy journey to identify and activate social purpose within their own organizations. Here are my top three. The first is use data and insights to build your business case. In corporate America, we are compelled by data and insights and a strong business case. So lead with data insights business case. Second, connect the impact you want to have to your business. We talked about it before with U.S. Bank and the fact that we are focusing our giving in and our engagement on economic development. The focus or the focuses that you pick have to make sense for your business. And if you ultimately want to align your business and your social impact strategy, uh, the best way you can do that is by focusing in a way that just makes sense for your business. The third tip that I have is create a clear, a compelling, a simple and inspiring strategy that identifies the benefits to key internal and external stakeholders. You have to be able to paint a picture for people when you're changing things to show them what the end vision is and why it's going to be better for them to change and move in the direction that you're suggesting. So if you can put together a really compelling, inspiring strategy that combines head, heart, and hands and show stakeholders what their role in it will be, you'll be able to get there more quickly and you'll get there collaboratively. Fabulous. Oh, that's that's great. Um, I'd love to know you're so sharp. So what keeps you besides a great uh, management team and a great purpose? Um, what do you like to read um, that keeps you up to date, inspires you, stretches you and any recommendations of blogs or books or even um, exec ed that you want to share with our listeners? Well, you know, I was thinking about it, and I think um, probably the the resource I use the most, and you'll appreciate this. Well, let me start by anything that you do, Carol. <laughs> oh, I didn't. Ask. Oh, I didn't pay you to say. I know you didn't, but <laughs> truly, I do. I follow you. you, and I do enjoy um, a, a lot of the work that you do, um, and the podcast, and the other uh, the other elements that you uh, produce. But I do really value anything that's put out by the CECP, who you mm -hmm. mentioned earlier, because the CECP plays this very unique role in our field. They bring together top leaders in corporate philanthropy. They always have relevant topics. They're always anchored in data and insights that are going to inform your decision making. So I really encourage all of your listeners to think about how to engage with the CECP, whether it's through their meetings, their publications, their social media to think about how doing good in the community, bringing purpose to our companies is really a critical component of long-term financial success. And then I have to put a plug in for one of my favorite books that I'm reading uh, right now. 
which is by my friend Ben Hecht. And it's called Reclaiming the American Dream. If you are interested mm. in issues of equity uh, and proven mm. success, um, successful approaches to how to solve issues of equity, which can be enormously complex, um, that book is a great resource. Oh, that's super. And we're going to have CCP um, Daryl on the show soon. Good. So um, I will share with him the the kind comments that you said. And um, we've always found them um, over the last 20 years to be so important for the evolution of a business and doing good and integrating into um, growing a business as well as growing social impact. So that should be a great show. So um, I'd love to close and just ask you, what haven't we asked? Um, and I can only give you a few more minutes. I know you could probably take about two hours. <laughs> well, is that, I don't know if that's feedback on my communication style. <laughs> no, no, no. It, no, it's on the richness of your experience and that fabulous road trip of a lifetime. There you go. Well, you know, you have asked it all, I think, but I I'd love to close with um, a key learning that I've had while doing this work for a number of years, both at Target and U.S. Bank, and that is that this work can be really hard. I think sometimes people look at the work that we do in corporate social responsibility and they say, oh, it looks like so much fun. You're always in a gown. You're at events. You're mm -hmm. giving away money. You're kissing babies. <laughs> in corporate social responsibility, you know, we are a business unit. We are part of large organizations. We're trying to drive change. We have budgets. We have strategies. We have all of those typical business stressors. But what we also have that I believe is, uh, is pretty magical is we get to live a life of purpose through the careers that we've chosen and the work that we do. And I think that is the greatest joy that I have as a human being is every day I get to spend all of this time that I spend at work on things that matter. So what I would encourage anybody when the work gets hard or the days get long is to remember the joy that is truly this work. Surround yourself with a great team be patient with people, meet them where they are and help them move forward. And then finally, be gentle with yourself because when there are bumps in the road, you need to be able to be resilient and recover and then get back at this very important work that has so much impact on the people and the communities in this country that need it the most. Oh, thank you. That was brilliantly stated. So I want to thank um, Reba Dominski, Chief Responsibility Officer for U.S. Bank, for joining us today. Um, she took us on a journey from eating her Cheerios at breakfast and learning about what it's like to truly be a giving person and how much that certainly pays off both for a career as well as for someone's soul. So I want to thank you so much. And also, I think that we're all really thankful that you did take the leap from Target to U.S. Bank and you have learned so much and you have so much to share. Thank you. So thank you so much, Reba. Thank you so much, Carolyn. Thanks for all of the work that you do in this space. It really does make a difference. It was a pleasure to talk to you. It was great. And I would like to leave with our question for our listeners. What is your purpose? 